So let's measure the threads on my lead screw. Are they metric? Are they imperial? Let's take the lash out. Let's set the dial at zero, just so I can mark number of rotations. And let's zero the DRO. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And we have effectively traveled one inch. So my lead screw is imperial. It is 10 threads per inch. All right, so we're looking at that. That must be three quarters, seven eighths. Let's find out. 0.782. What? Oh no, what if I put it on metric? Great. I have a 20 millimeter lead screw with 10 threads per inch. How am I gonna find a nut for that? Greetings fellow DIYer and welcome to my video. So you may be wondering, what difference does it make? As long as we've got 10 threads per inch, the dials are correct, it's easily set up for threading. What difference does it make if it's 20 millimeters across? Well, as I alluded to in my open, there's no ready-made nut. Yes, I have a lathe and can make my own nut now, but I couldn't when I started doing modifications and making improvements to this machine. Because 20 millimeter is only 30 thousandths bigger than three quarter. What I ended up doing when I replaced the nut on this was buying a three quarter inch nut. And then if you look right there, you can see that I cut a few grooves and that I tapered this lead screw. And what that allowed me to do is slowly work the three quarter inch nut onto the 20 millimeter lead screw. Now that was a major pain. It took me several hours of working it back and forth to finally get it to where it fit. And that's not something that I wanna do again. At the time, I did not have threading capabilities on this machine. I had not set up my ELS with the stepper driver. And so that was the only option that I had. Now I'm thinking really seriously about putting a half nut on the carriage. And in doing so, I have two choices. I can either use the same technique that I did before, or I can take the piece of brass that I'm using to make the half nut, chuck it up in the lathe, and turn the inner threads in it, but the best way to do it would be to use a tap. Sadly, they don't make a 10 thread per inch, 20 millimeter tap. So what I've decided to do is make a brand new lead screw. I purchased some 3 quarter by 10 TPI threaded rod, and I purchased the corresponding tap, both of which being left-hand thread, because this is left-hand thread. And I'm simply going to machine up a new lead screw with the new dimension. For the short term, I will thread some bronze and make a new nut for the carriage. But in the long run, this will give me the ability to easily make my half nut in the future. It seems like a lot of work, but I think it's way better than fighting with this metric imperial hybrid. In order to make a new lead screw, I need this lead screw installed on the lathe. So the only choice that I have is to disassemble this, remove the lead screw, take all my measurements, write them down, put this back together, and then cut said lead screw. From there, I'll have to repeat the process to confirm that the new lead screw matches the old lead screw. It's definitely going to be a little more of a pain, but when it's all said and done, I should have a nice new lead screw. So this is the lead screw that I removed from my lathe. I'm going to finish taking all this end apart, and then we're going to use some tools to make some measurements, write everything down so that I can reinstall this and do the machining for the replacement lead screw. 
the hand wheel on this lead screw is affixed with a roll pin. And I don't like that design. So one thing I'm gonna incorporate into the new lead screw is a keyway and a nut to hold everything in place. So now with the handle removed, let's see about getting the rest of this off. Now I've already loosened the jam nuts off camera. Little tiny pin that goes in that hole for locating the dial. And clearly those are a press fit. So I was able to get this piece loose by holding on to the lead screw right here and then whacking the end of it with a dead blow hammer. And that then allows us to remove the thrust bearing, the retainer, and the thrust bearing on the other end. Now, same thing here. This piece is a press fit. I'm sure I could get it off, but for the purpose of taking measurements, it's not that critical. I'm going to leave it on there for now so that I can reassemble all this when I'm done taking measurements and then we'll be ready to go. All right, there it is. It's crude, but it will get the job done and allow me to make my lead screw. In the middle of my lead screw build, I got a little distracted. I decided I'm doing the main lead screw. I might as well do the carriage lead screw as well. Sadly, I didn't shoot any film of that. It was really a pretty simple process. I ordered some half inch left hand Acme all thread and then I machined the end that affixes to the carriage. And I drilled a hole in that, made it a slight press fit, and then machined down one end of the all thread and pressed it into place using a little bit of Loctite sleeve retainer. And that gave me a nice straight lead screw with minimal effort. I also took some time and machined pockets into the main face of the carriage so that I could add thrust bearings to it, and that made a huge difference. It is so much smoother now with those thrust bearings. And now to the main lead screw. So there were a couple design issues that I did not like with this lead screw. The first thing that I didn't like is that the hand wheel is held on with a tension pin. That uh, pin tends to flex and the hole wasn't drilled straight. And so the hand wheel, this is a replacement hand wheel, not the original one. It wobbled a little bit and just the whole design was kind of poor. The second thing is the lead screw is held into place by this steel collar. Now you can see right there where the screw began to loosen up and as the hand wheel was cranked, it tore through the metal, and instead of moving the carriage, we moved the lead screw. The only thing I did like about this setup was the fact that it had some adjustment to remove backlash so we could tighten down on these bearings and, and get them preloaded properly, and the fact that it did have thrust bearings. That was the only thing that this setup had going for it. I figured since I was making my own lead screw that I had the opportunity to make improvements. So instead of using that steel bushing, I used this right here. Now you see there's no holes that have to be lined up. We have a nice groove and I machined a bolt to have a rounded head so that it will fit perfectly down into this groove and lock it in place. And then all I have to do is use a jam nut on the outside to keep it from backing out. On the original lead screw, the steel bushing was just riding directly on the lead screw. I figured, why not put in a needle bearing? 
This will give me a much smoother action and should help prolong the life of the replacement lead screw. Then on either side of the needle bearing, we have our thrust bearings. And a pocket was machined in both sides to fit those so that they were protected and not slopping around. And that gives us a really nice, smooth action. If you're wondering why I made this so much bigger, one was to keep this in covered so that chips and things aren't getting into those bearings. And two, this is now a mount that I will be attaching my lead screw cover to, but that is a different video. So this is what I started with. This is a chunk of three quarter by 10 Acme all thread. It was not cheap. I got a six foot piece for with shipping. It was a little over a hundred dollars. And I decided I wanted the extra length just in case the machining didn't go as planned. Plus, it's good to have stuff like this around the shop. And it wasn't that much more to get the extra three feet. Originally, I was worried about machining this and it flopping around. And so I actually built a steady rest for my machine to be able to machine this. When I chucked it up in the lathe and ran it through the bore of the spindle, I was able to get it fairly tight and the end that was loose wasn't flopping around hardly at all. So I was actually able to do the machining on both ends without using the steady rest. This is what I machined. So this is where my bearings ride. This is a groove for my key that fits into the slot that I cut in the hand wheel. And then the end is threaded. I decided to go with a double system to get everything set up. One, I use a locking nut to tighten this down, to properly remove backlash and eliminate any slop in the bearings, get them properly preloaded. And then there's a set screw in the hand wheel that tightens down onto the key. Now, the only issue that I ran into was the key that I'm using is 3 16 and the key in my dial was smaller. It was set up metric. I don't remember the exact measurement on it. So all I did is put a key in my mill and milled it down to size so that it fits into the smaller opening there and then still works in the larger opening of my hand wheel and my lead screw. My nut ended up being more complicated than I intended. The first nut that I made for the brand new lead screw was this guy right here. I made it by turning it down, getting it the right shape, and then using an Acme left hand tap to tap it. Now, one thing that I did when I made both of these nuts is I ran the tap partway through, enough to where we had threads started on this side, and then I flipped it over and ran the tap the other direction, but never went fully through either way. And what that did was that made my nut ever so slightly snug, and that helped me to eliminate backlash. Now, I know as it gets used, the teeth in there will wear and will end up getting more backlash, but I wanted to start with it fairly snug at the beginning. Now, the reason this was the first attempt is because, as I mentioned before, I'm using lead screw covers. And this end, I machined a flange that my lead screw cover could attach to. This end, I just intended to use an L bracket and a flange. But after fighting with it and trying to figure out how to get it to mount, that turned out to be more of a pain than what it was worth. So I decided why not make an oversized lead screw. So that's what I have right here. I ended up using a boring bar down to, it's about there because I did not want to mess with threading this the whole way. That would have been extremely challenging. I'm sure if you've ever done Acme threading with a tap, you know how much tension there is. There are a few thin threads on this half because I didn't take all the material off. I just took enough off to make the tap come through a little easier. Now, this works the same way as the one I just showed you. It fits into the mounting location. Because my lead screw will be covered, I have what used to be a ball oiler pressed into there. I had a brain fart. When I pressed it in, it was hanging down ever so slightly into the teeth of the Acme threading. And I thought, no problem. 
all I have to do is run the tap down that and I can make clearance. What I didn't think about is the fact that there's a spring inside that ball oiler and as soon as you remove the bottom of the oiler, the spring pops out and so does the ball. So right now it's just a hole, but it should not be an issue. This is underneath the carriage. I can still use that as an oiling hole and I don't have to worry about getting grime and grit in it. Now I went ahead and knurled this, not because I wanted to have it hold especially well. I knurled it because I made a mistake. I was going for about a 3 thousandths press fit and I only got about a 1 thousandths press fit and it tends to slide a little bit as you're cranking on it, especially if there's any tension. Now it is held by a set screw, but I needed a little more. So I went ahead and knurled that, which gave me several more thousandths area, and that is now a better press fit. On this end, after I slide it into its mounting spot, I will fit this O-ring into that groove that I machined, and that will allow me to put the lead screw covers on the other end. Again, different video. So I just want to show how smooth the action is on this with the three bearing system. I mean, that's, that's like a wheel. I mean, that just spins extremely well. And by being able to use the threaded end to adjust it and get all lash out, it will make the hand wheel end of this lathe spin so nicely. The new lead screw is super smooth, and with the lead screw covers, it should stay that way for a long, long time. If you like what you've seen, please click like. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.